Hello guys, this is Notepad from Digital Apathy and I'm going to show you how to use Unity with uh, source code control. For this uh, demo I'm going to be using Git, which is the uh, source control I normally use. Git was developed to keep track of the uh, development of the Linux operating system kernel. That sounds very impressive, and it is. It also sounds very complicated, but it isn't. It's quite easy to do actually. So to get started, we're going to download Source Tree by Atlassian. I'll post the uh, URL for this um, program in the video description. It's the um, best client for Windows that I've found. It really makes working with Git very easy. And you can also use it for Mac and even better, it's uh, open source, so it's free. So just download that one, install it using all the defaults and you're good to go. So let's get started. We're going to open up Unity, We're going to create a new project. Browse to where I want the project to be located. Call it git example, for example. Select folder and create. Now we have our project created. We're going to go to edit, project settings and editor. You want to change the version control mode to meta files and you want to change the asset serialization mode to force text like that. The meta files um, is a way that Unity stores information about files in a separate meta file so you can keep track of the changes in case you modify the file and move it around externally you can still figure out where it belongs the uh, force text mode means that even if usually like if you save a game object uh, all the settings for that game object is stored in binary form but this forces into a text form so you later on you can use like a merge tool or something like that to see what changes you want to keep and what changes you want to discard which you can't do with a binary file all right so let's start up source tree like this you want to create a new repository by clicking here then we want to browse to our unity project git example select folder and hit create. It'll just leave everything as is. Like so. Now, quick overview. Here is all the files in your folder that has been changed since the last time. So there's a new repository, everything is new. Stage changes are the files that you want to make permanent when you hit commit up there. I'll show you later. This area shows you, if you select a file, it will show you what has been changed. We mark the changes in green and everything else is white. By default, it includes everything but the library folder and the temporary folder and a couple of other files you don't want to have included in your repository because these files are being generated by Unity and it's specific to your computer and they change very often I, they don't uh, do anything like if you for other people I mean so if you want to share this project with someone else you don't want to include these folders the easiest way is to oops, create a ignore file that tells git and source tree what files to ignore or folders to ignore. So there's seven here by default and uh, I'm just going to save this file in the git example folder. Make sure it's all types. Let's git ignore. Save. And uh, in order to have um, source tree to refresh it's easiest to just close it and then open it up again 
when it's back up again, you can see it removed the temporary and the library folder, only leaving your project settings and the git ignore. So if you go over to the log history, which is the, um, the uh, view I tend to use the most, you have all the files that has some kind of change to it. You can stage the changes, meaning that you want to make those changes permanent. And you have the history. And over here you have whatever is changed this last time. You hit click stage all, meaning you're moving, you want to commit to make every change permanent up here. The green plus means that it's a new, new file. And you can see this is what's been changed in that sp specific file. Click the commit button to make the changes permanent. Enter a sensible comment. Created new Unity project. Just hit commit. Now you can see that our master branch, our default branch, has this change. At that time by this guy, which is me. Now, uh, it's not a good way to be developing everything in the master branch. If you are going to develop things alone, then it's fine. But if you at some point are going to involve other people, the best way of doing that is to create a new branch uh, a different path if you want so each developer have their own file sets and you then merge back all the changes into master when you've done something good you want to keep go for it even if I work alone at the moment I'm going to create a new branch because I like to work that way so I hit the branch button create a new branch called notebit dev for example just hit create branch now you can see I have two branches here and here I can see that notebit development is being is the one that's being act, is active at the moment by that little icon over there I can also change back to master if I want to by right clicking and click on checkout master so this way I can swap between branches and all the files are being changed on the hard drive in the background I'll show you that later but I want to work in the development branch at the moment right so every good unity example needs a cube right so let's create one like that we set its position we need directional light and we're going to align the camera like so the standard default out of the box unity demo create a new folder call it scenes save the scene in that scenes folder in scene for example Okay, so if you go back into source tree now, let's refresh. You see it says uncommitted changes. Basically means something has been changed since the last time you made a commit. All right. Click on that. And you can see that three files that has something changed to it. So we're going to stage all of them and you can see all of them have the plus sign so it means that all of them all those three files are new so we make a commit added cube and, and light and hit commit now you can see my development branch is ahead of the master branch so now the uh, master if I check out the master it will revert back all the changes I did up to my development branch. Alright, that's how you keep you see uh, what point in time or development time each branch is located. Alright, so let's create another 
let's say sphere. Reset the position. Move it to slide a little bit. Well, it looks good. Doesn't really matter, but oh well. Like so. Hit save. Go back into source tree. Let it refresh. And now you see an orange icon next to the main scene. So I, I made a change to this scene. That's what that means. So I want to stage that one. And here you can see the original. Uh, if you want to see more of the original file, that you can see it like that. But just keep it at three lines. It gives a little bit of context where in the file something was changed. So I added all this kind of stuff. You can see I added a new game object. It's uh, named as Sphere. It doesn't have a tag, etc., etc. That's what the forced text serialization does for you. If you haven't done that, you will see a binary representation and you cannot see what's been changed because it will be all in binary mumbo jumbo. So let's make a commit. Added sphere. That's not how you spell the sphere. And commit. So now, now we can see if you step through the history, we created a new project. All these files were added. We added a cube and light. These files were added. We added a sphere, and this file was changed. Right, excellent. So let's say that I'm happy. I want to change, merge this back into the master branch. Let's say I'm working with someone else, and I want to have them be able to pull my changes into their changes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you're not going to do a merge. You're going to merge the development branch back into master. I usually close down Unity for this because Unity can be a little bit confused when you change files externally from Unity. I'm going to check out the master branch. You can see it's not being checked out. I'm going to hit the merge button. I'm going to select the commitment commit, sorry, I want to merge back into master. So I want to make all the changes up until including this one and make all the changes back into master. It's OK. Now you can see both development and master at the same point in time in development perspective. OK, so that's cool. Now you have a way of developing and keeping a, a reference point, let's say you you want to try something out and you start working on it and you figure out, ah, I don't want to do this, then you always go back to the master branch and nothing has been changed. Another thing I like to do is to, let's say I'm going to release this game as an alpha test or something, do a play test on it. I want to know that this point in time I did a release, and that's very easily done with adding a tag. I click the tag button. I'll say this will be my first version, my first alpha version. Hit tag, and you can see there's a little tag there saying 0 0.0.0. .0 .0. You can also see all the tags over here if you expand that tree. So if I quickly make another change here, at the cylinder, for example. Oops, like so. Let it refresh. Stage the file, stage the changes. Commit. Add in the cylinder. Looks very nice. Hit commit. Uh, by accident, I was in the master, I forgot to check out the development branch. Oh well. But now you can see the master is one ahead of the uh, tag and my development branch. The tag, you will never move that, but you will, you will move the, uh, the your branches forward. But you can always go back and have a look how was the game, how was the source code at the, this release, for example. So, 
that was all I wanted to show you. I've been using Source Tree and Unity for uh, quite a bit of time now, and it's worked flawlessly. I've been working with other people through Source Tree, through a server. I will probably add another video later showing how to set up um, a multi user way of doing uh, gates and source tree and unity and everything. So, until then, I hope you enjoyed this video and then you learned something and uh, have a good time. Bye.